That's for sure. Now, you worked a full-time job all the way through your racing career, yes? Right, all the way through. And, Even through the late model, yeah. And you were saying you didn't miss a lot of days at work either? No, I missed one day of work for ra- because of racing. One. W- one day of work for racing over all those all decades? Those, probably 15, 10, 15 years, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Where did you work? American Motors built Ramblers. Really? Yeah. And I got to believe that. Can we call it a factory, or what was it? Uh, it was a factory we built the cars there, yeah. And is that factory long gone? Yeah, it's plowed underneath. I mean, I know American Motors is long gone, yeah, but yeah. it's the factory's gone? Yeah, it's all gone. Yeah, and then he went to Kenosha, and I finished off uh, about the last four years in Kenosha. I, wasn't there a time when you had an opportunity, possibly, to move south and hitch up with NASCAR and, yeah. and do the deal? I mean, did that happen? Yeah, it did happen, but I don't remember. A guy was trying to hook me up, sort of, but I wasn't that nuts about it because back in them days, if you quit your job, you probably weren't going to get it back. And I had two kids, you know, mm-hmm. and I was having fun. And uh, if you quit your job and go down there and say you got hurt, which back in there, they had no insurance on any of them guys. Yeah, then what? Then you're screwed, you know. It's, yeah. If you're still good enough to ship you home, you come back home, then you're out of a job and everything else, you know. And I was making decent money and everything was going good, you know what I mean? So, and this is your home? Yeah. This, and you didn't want to leave? No, I didn't want to go anywhere, really. I was not a traveler. Uh, like everybody would hang out at Hills Corners by the old tree there. They had an old tree and... Everybody would hang out there every night, and I didn't do it. And Hale's Corners is long gone, too, right? Long that, gone. There's yeah. one art there now, but the tree is still there. That's the a, tree is still there? The tree left oh. there on purpose, and it's a big-ass tree. I and just, people would party under that tree? They'd party under that tree till they'd throw them out there. And the tree is still there? After racing, and they get kicked out of the pit, they'd come here and drink cases of cases of beer until they were kicked out of here, which was usually 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Even when the sun come up, and Wes Eckert can tell you a lot more about that. Think, think about the stories that were told under that oak tree after the races at Hales Corners. A lot of them. When they sold the property and the Menards was built, which is right over there, which is where the Hales Corners Speedway used to be. But when they sold the property, part of the stipulation was they kept the old oak tree. Right, that old oak tree cannot be cut down. It's a landmark oak tree is what it is. It's a piece of history there. It's a piece of history, yep. Yeah. And everybody that ever raised that hill corners knows something about the old oak tree. Yeah. That's there cool. Stands. I love that. That, that, that oak tree is a bit more than 100. Yeah. That thing is huge. Yeah. 150. And it was Jack Brewer that finished second behind me for every year. And they had top-notch stuff of every kind, and uh, he was always complaining of that, you know, they always thought I was cheating and this and that, but hell, I didn't know anymore, but I had the most stock car out there. Hmm. The stockest car, I'll guarantee you, I had the stockest car out there, and I have a friend that I wanted to have you meet today, his name is Wes Eckert, and I'm going to call him up, and I want him to tell the story how he got married, we stood up for, he got married at the racetrack and I stood up for him. We all drove in tuxedos and then uh, I ended up winning the feature too that night, by the way, in a tuxedo. You wore a tuxedo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so you guys got married at Hale's Corners? Yeah, because it was, she wanted a June wedding and uh, I says, well, I got to race that night. And she says, well, let's do it at the racetrack and that's what happened. Well, didn't you, did you drive the car with your tux on? Yeah, yeah. we both did. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. No, I haven't heard that one yet. <laughs> that's, did you win? You that's the story. Did. That's the story. Well, it's the story. Uh, UPI was there. Uh, uh, United Press Service. Yep. And API, they were both there. Well, they were doing a story. And the best man happened to win the feature. So it's the best man always wins. That headline went all over the world. To every English-speaking country, they put it in the newspapers. It was in New York, it was in LA, it was everywhere. The best man always wins. And it even made the London papers, because UPI and API was there. And uh, that was kind of interesting. So you're, you're 
You're world famous, Frank. Yeah. You went all the way to London. Yeah, he got you and your circles gave us the toxins uh, for advertising. Yeah. Anyway, the Saturday Night Dirt Track toxins got awful dirty, really dirty. But the party was the next day. The reception was the next day. We had extra toxins. They gave us two. They gave us two sets of clothes. <laughs> yeah, because we destroyed the ones on Saturday night. <laughs> I took a picture of my wife pushing my race car with a little mini dress on. And that headline said, get me to the church on time. So that made some papers too. But the best man always wins is a, is a better story. That went around the world. Yeah, yes it did. English speaking, as far as I know. He was a big cheater, <laughs> you know. He, he was a cheater. Cheat. Yeah. He, he knew how to cheat. He knew how to cheat. He was good at it. And he'll tell you the shit that he did. And uh, Well, I drove his car one night and he said, Okay, you drive the car. If you win, don't go to the scales. Why not? Don't go to the scales with it. You let me come out in the end field and I'll fix it so you can go to the scales. At that time, we had to waste so much in the front end and the back end didn't make any difference. But what he did is he had some bars built in the car and he had some really heavy freaking weights of some kind way in the back of the car. And then he had... Uh, if you won, and you'd pull a little lever, and all the weight would roll down that pipe to the front end. And roll out. Yeah. It, oh my gosh. It rolled to the front, to the front wheels. Oh, <laughs> so it weighed enough up there. In the front wheels would weigh enough. Yeah. Okay. It had so much weight on the front end. <laughs> is, is there any particular racing memory that stands out more than any other? Well, a couple of the things I like to that I thought that stood out more not so much here but I went to uh, Jefferson Speedway mm -hmm. my sister worked with that guy that owned that track and he kept saying tell your brother to come down here tell your brother to come down by me but Jefferson ain't that far really and uh, I said tell him I don't race asphalt tell him I don't race asphalt this went on for a few years and <clears throat> finally he says uh Tell your brother to come down here this weekend. We got an open competition. Whatever he brings, because I used to tell him my car ain't even legal for that track, you know. Because all the, you know how asphalt cars are low and they got mm -hmm. white slick tires and uh, yeah. And I practice, and I ain't going anywhere. I'm spinning the tires like crazy. Open ran the car is tall, you know what I mean? It's a dirt car, and it's stock, almost stock. I'm thinking, what the hell? I don't have any adjustments. I had no adjustments hardly on my car at all to make, you know, to change the weight around. Like, they had cranks, you know, remember that? And mm -hmm. they used to turn it. So I'm like, what do I do now? Kind of like adjusting a track bar today? Yeah, yeah like that. But none of that stuff was on there. So I'm thinking, hmm. well, I got that trailer tire. That trailer handled like shit, so I had the biggest tires on there you could get in the back. A little tiny tires in the front. Because it had two wheels on each side. So I take the trailer tire off and I put it on the left rear, <clears throat> which was about six inches higher than the right rear, which is totally wrong, you know that. <laughs> sure. So I went out there and damn, this was working pretty good. So I started in the back of the 50 lap feature and I won it. And they were pissed off. Wow. Yeah, I started. I think second car from the back, and I passed the whole field. With a dirt car. With a dirt car with a trailer with, tire on the left rear. Which is not supposed to happen. No, and I had about six inches of reverse. The big tire on the left side and the little one on the right side. Well, I drove around and underneath everybody. I just kept going to the front. And uh, we had a couple, two restarts for sure, and they tried to take me out once. <laughs> the guy clipped me, but he just ticked me hard enough not to bother me, you know? And then when I won it, they didn't want it. The guy said, he's cheating, he's cheating. Don't pay him. And the owner said, it's an open competition. Yes, I'm paying him. So he paid me. So then I didn't have any air in it for the trailer tire because I left the air out of it so I could run the race. But then I, there was a guy there that said, hey, Frank, give me that tire. I'll get some air for you. So he took the trailer tire and went over and got 30-some, five pounds of air so we could put it back on the trailer to Get you, get, home. get you home. Yeah. You 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 clean you cleaned up and pissed everyone off. You pissed everybody off. <laughs> That's funny. He said, I like wait, that. He comes back here again. He'll never finish a race. You know what I said? 
you ain't going to see me back here again. <laughs> and I ain't coming back. I'm smarter than that. <laughs> you think I'm going to come back after you tell me you'll never finish another race? <laughs> right? Is there anything, if, if you knew then what you know now kind of thing, would you do anything different racing-wise? Yeah. Would, would you go back and change, In change it? In the late miles, I'd have bought tires, and I'd have been pretty damn fast. And You'd have bought new tires. I'd have bought new tires. Yeah. That killed me. I mean, bad. You just, you, what, too cheap? Too, too cheap. To, okay. To buy tires. Well, fair enough. One year I started out in the beginning of the year and everybody bought brand new tires. And I had, I put my old tires on from the year before because I didn't want to buy new ones or couldn't afford it, one of the two. And I ended up with quick time that night and everybody was shitting. I can't believe it. How the hell do you get fast time? How can that be? You got them old rotten old tires on there, and everybody's got new tires. I'm, I don't know, but I had fast time. <laughs> those early, those early hobby stocks or sportsmen or whatever you want to call them, you know those whatever they were, fifty five, fifty six, fifty seven. Yeah, five, six, seven. They were all Chevys. Chevys and yeah. yeah, but you did dip into the sixties and and seventies when the cars began to take on a more wedge appearance getting farther away from an actual stock car yeah. so you saw some changes in the evolution of these cars yeah i, I stayed at the 57 ford till i went to a late model yeah i kept running the same car over and over and you know what i never changed gear ratios i used the same transmissions and prettier never changed the car for all them years i still can't believe that you know everybody's building new cars doing this doing that but i don't think it had so much to do with the cars. I think it had a lot to do with, and I hate to say this, but I think I was really good at watching the cars in front of me, where they were going, and so all you do is pick off one at a time, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and if cars seemed to not change that much, I mean, everybody was doing a lot of changes except me. They had screw jacks and all these cars, and even like, 57 Fords and Chevys and guys now you find out they were moving their motors back and this and that and and my car was stock. I, you just stayed at square one. Square one, stock or nail. That's back, interesting. One night, we were about three weeks into the season and uh, I was cleaning up the garage and I found this sway bar in there and I thought, damn, I wonder where the hell this sway bar came from. I don't remember having two sway bars. I'm like, I wonder where the hell this sway bar come from. So I went and looked on the trailer because the car was, damn, I don't have a sway bar in that car. I forgot to put it in. <laughs> <laughs> I put it in oh. there. I don't think it made any difference. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I don't think it made any difference. Who needs a sway bar? Yeah. Thing, you know? Now back in, you know, it's another thing. You know, in today's modern era, race car drivers can't fight. You know, lawsuits, you, you sign oh, the waiver, yeah. Oh, yeah. you can't fight. Yeah. You don't settle your arguments that way. You go to the NASCAR trailer and you get schooled, you, they sit you down and, yeah. you know, this bad and that. Boy. You bad boy, you. Um, but but back in your day, did you not settle your arguments with a fight, fist fight? Uh, did that? I mean, I never actually got physical into a... Really? You guys tried <laughs> threatening to beat me up and were about to do it, but... Uh, maybe they knew better because I was off the farm and I was no back in them days. I was no probably. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't fight because nobody was gonna mess with Frank well, Smith back first in that of day. All, my theory was to race, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to run into anybody. Accidents do happen, this and that, but don't run into somebody every night. You know what I mean? Sure. You're out there to race. Anybody can smash up a car. That's pretty easy to do. Yeah. You know, you go out there and you race. If sometimes you got to give a little bit. Sometimes, you know, if the same guy keeps running in you over and over and over, well. Uh, so were you a aggressive? Huh? Were you aggressive? Did you move people out of the way no. as necessary? No. no. You no. did not. Hardly ever touched anybody. Hardly. You drove around them. Yeah, either that or you wait till your opening come and you, I hardly, I don't think I ever, ever pushed anybody out of the way to win a race or gain a really? spot. No. I mean, hardly my bumpers on the front hardly had any marks on them even. Do any of those old relics still exist? Those old race cars? Yeah, that... they, they do. I wish to God. Mine laid somewhere behind my real race car, laid behind the gas station for 15 years, but at that time nobody was building them, you know, and they're just laying there. It... Then they end up throwing them away. I see something cool. Was it? Yeah, 
it was painted the same color the whole deal. Exactly. That's it. Howell Gardens. Wow. Yeah. That is awesome. We're gonna... That's your original seat. Yeah. Can you still fit in that, Frank? Yeah, I can fit in there. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But I'm not getting in it. You're not getting in it? Hard. Okay. I want to. I already That's had... so cool. It's beautiful. And this is what they look like inside. That was it. That was it. That's all you had. I, that's all we had. That was it. That's, that's and all you got was... nothing to hold you up here nothing. like they do today. No. Nothing. At first, I didn't No even... power steering. No, we didn't have wow. none of this. We yeah, I know. You didn't have the shoulder belts Not then. Not when you first started. You no. just had the lap belt. Right. We just had the lap belt. That's right. incredible. This era of racing is, is beyond incredible. Yeah. No headrest. Of no headrest. Uh, no. no. Nothing. This is actually a little bit better than what I raced, you know. Oh, so, but it is, it is what it is. That's what we all raced. Yeah, that was it back in the day, you know. You, right, the Chevys were the same, Fords you just did what you had to do, you know. This is, you know, what this is, Frank. No, this is a true, this is a stock car. Yeah, a true <laughs> race car, yeah. yeah, no kidding. Yeah, it's beautiful. And this thing is stock, I mean, pretty damn stock, as stock as you're gonna get. Yeah. I run the same brew in for seven years, same 411 gears, same transmissions, and hardly change anything on it. Like zero almost, you know? And you didn't mess with your setups. No. You, you just left them alone. You just drove the wheels off them. Year after year after year. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. Look at all that room to work on them. Yeah, no kidding. Eh? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was plenty of room. That's and, neat. Uh, Nothing fancy, you know, nothing. Hey, old man. How, How you doing, doing young kid? man? Good to see you. <laughs> yeah. You're alive and kicking. Yeah. Thank Did you, you cover the battery with an old inner tube? <clears throat> so Thank you guys the... for dragging us out. Oh, yeah. oh cover the battery with an old it. inner tube? Yep, in case it pops. Get this so. wheel taken. Covered them up with a battery. That's all you did back in the day. Why you know? did you do that? Oh, in case you tip over so the acid wouldn't get oh. all over. That oh. was the whole idea. That's good reason. Yeah. <laughs> And nothing fancy, just a stock wash. radiator, you know. It's been under that you doing all right? And this hey, is the dirt. When you get dirt in here, this is where things flop like this. Oh. And shake the dirt off. Yeah, so yeah. I wouldn't get in a radiator. Perfect. So, that, so, so what drove you to do this? Take all the man hours. I know it took to put this together. Well, Why'd you do it? Because it's Frank Smith or? Well, not only that, another thing. When they came to us about this project, they wanted to. Who came to you? How well, was it? John, John Surges, Surges yeah. Yep, mm -hmm. and his brother Bob Surges, who's now passed away. And they asked us if we would put a motor in this car, and any motor. I said, well, it's got to be correct for what Frank ran. And they brought me three different engines. Two of them were incorrect for the era. And then they brought me this Y block, and it was all locked up. And they asked me if I could rebuild it for him, and that's what we did. And rebuilt it, bored it out, oversized pistons in it changed the cam out, put new bearings and rings and did it right. And then we did the brake, dad did the brake lines and then the electrical on it. And then Wes Eckert drilled the axles out in the back to fit the Buick, Buick wheels, yeah. Buick wheels to make it look like mercury because we didn't have a spare mercury or inline around. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. And then Mike Hollison is actually the person who did the body. Originally they, it was a four-door body, and he shortened it and Made merged it. it with a two-door. Which was what Frank's was. Yeah, Frank's was a two-door. Yeah, everything, the wheelbase and everything is the same as a mm -hmm. two-door. And then it was, what was it? And this is what we had for Barb. Barber painted the car, and then Billy Hoffman did the lettering and the stripe. It's beautiful. And then that's Frank's original seat in the car. It's just a chunk of history. Well preserved. Back in them days, Trunk up. That's your that's fuel cell. Better, better than I had, but that's okay. But that's what you see back here. That's all stock, you know. You that's stock frame. Yeah. It's a stock car. Yeah, it's a stock car. Awesome. So that's the name of it. I like that. You guys raced against each other. Yeah. yeah. From the sixties until I. Uh, I got hurt in 98 in an ATV accident. Oh, really? And then I had to quit. Ah, uh, Frank got a lot of yellow or blue on me, on him, and I got a lot of yellow on mine. <laughs> you guys, that's what that's yeah. the where trading paint came yeah. from. Was Frank a pretty darn good racer? Oh, yeah, I had to chase him a lot. Yeah, yeah. Was he the best of his era, you think? Oh, yes, 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 he was. Yeah. yeah.
In fact, we have a clone of my car that raced against this car in the barn on a rotisserie. Oh, really? That we're rebuilding it, building it up like this one from yeah. the ground up. So if you beat Frank Smith, you were having a good night. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very <laughs> and, good night. Yeah, I can believe that. A lot of fun. Yeah, of I'm fun sure that. Frank, yeah. We were competitors back then, now we're friends. <laughs> okay, yeah. I bet the, the friendship thing was out the window back then, though, oh, wasn't it? Oh, yes, it was out the window. It's yeah. not the word for it. <laughs> I can't repeat what a lot of it was said back then. And Isn't that funny yeah. how all these years later, you know, you're, you're yeah. past all the... When you're no longer competing, you decide to be friends. Yeah. Well, when they brought up this car to us, I told my son, I says, why not? Let's let's do what we can for Frank, you know. Yeah. Because he deserved it. And, you know, we had the time, we had the facilities, and uh, my son had the money. So you know, because it does take a little bit of money. And of then, course. Uh, we ended up with the car because of some other problems. The uh, gentleman who originally started on the body. So when we got the car, it was lettered and painted. So we had to cover a lot of it up so we wouldn't scratch it and get it all messed up and uh, we have a lot of pictures uh, we'd have to dig out that frank was right there when my son was building the motor putting the motor in and, yeah and uh we actually uh, to get some of the parts we had to hunt different places like for the distributor and the carburetor we went to different car shows and dug them up and found them and to me this is a show of respect you guys were once fierce competitors on the track and quite frankly back then probably didn't like each other now well, you're friends <laughs> and this to me is a show of respect to, well, to preserve just, this wasn't just liking each other it was being competitor okay you beat me i beat you i mean many a time they had to pull us apart because we wanted to strangle each other <laughs> well that doesn't sound like friends to me but yeah, okay well, yeah. <laughs> all right but but this to me that the fact that you took the time money and effort to restore yeah. this car on behalf of Frank Smith, that to me is a show of respect. Oh, well, thank you. Well, we didn't do everything. We did a. That's all right. You did a lot. Good part of it. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. It wouldn't have been done without you guys driving it. Uh, probably no. not. It would have been a show. Yeah. yeah. Like what it was when we received it. And uh... Bobby, did you have your picture taken with that car? Yep. You something. did a couple pictures. Hey, do you want to? Uh... I'm home from work. My neighbor parked in front of my garage doors. And it's 105 degrees. He's trying to get the shocks off, and it's so damn hot out there. So I felt sorry for him. So I said, "Well, let me cut them off with a torch." Now, you know, you, you know, our rusty old bolts are. You can't get them loose. So I said, "All right." So I got underneath there, and which I didn't know, as I was cutting it off, the little rubber started on fire, which is not the big deal. But they had a plastic gas line on the car, which they didn't have plastic gas lines, but. Apparently Ford ran out of steel gas lines and they decided to put plastic gas lines on there. Well, the next thing I know, the thing is blowing up like a damn snake and it's getting bigger and bigger and I put the fire out, but then by that time the rubber was burning too big and I half-ass had the fire out, but then the gas line got fatter and fatter and once it broke, we were in trouble then because then we had a big fire underneath the car. So I quick jump out from underneath there. The gas tank was just full. He filled it up with gas. I jump out of there, and I'm like, it was on jack stand. So I said, drive this thing to the fire station. So I grabbed the car. You're telling him to drive a car that's already on fire to the drive to the fire station. To the fire station, which was a block and a half away. Well, maybe do So I grab a hold of the car, and I throw it off the jack stands, and he takes off down the alley like a hell. With a ball of fire behind him, I run to the corner because I'm like a hundred feet away from the corner. So I run down there, and he's going around the next corner with a ball of fire behind him as big as the car. And then he's headed up towards the fire station. He gets there. He's in front of the fire station now. He made it all the way with gas and a carburetor. My car's on fire. Where's the car's on fire? Well, where is it? What's your address? It's out in front. And <laughs> they run out in front. Here the thing's on fire big time, burning up. And by the time I got up there, they had a big long stick about 20 feet long. They had to close up the road. And they took a big long pole and they opened up the gas can, the gas tank, and it flame shot almost all the way across the street and it comes squirting out of the gas tank. Oh my God, the car was on fire. The top was burning on it and and then the one tire blowed, boom! 
<laughs> I'm like, oh, son of a bitch. No. Another tire blows. Boom! I'm like, oh, my God. The springs were melting on the stupid thing, and it was just ugly as hell. Finally, we uh, ended up, the fire's out and all that shit, so then we had to tow it home, sitting on the ground. So then I knew the guy in the junkyard real good. So the gas tank, believe it or not, even though it blew up, it wasn't hurt. So I had put new springs in there, got the guy uh, got the guy new tires and rims for the back. And the roof was, the vinyl roof, half of it burnt, half did, but it was black. So he just painted. He said, I don't worry about it. It was a nice car, too. So he took and cut the, we uh, let the, what you call it, uh, took and I fixed up his car and got him back on the road, so he was all right with it, so <laughs> that was the name of that story. So. <laughs>